Holy Habits, Fellowship and Eating Together. In the original Holy Habits literature, these are two separate topics that have much in common with each other. So for our reflections, let's look at the two together, for after all, the one feeds the other, and they're thus woven together. The common ground is that eating together provides an ideal backdrop to developing fellowship, which itself is an ageless concept that is deeper than mere friendship. There are many references to fellowship in the New Testament, not least of all in that inspirational passage from Acts we've been returning to throughout these holy habits. They devoted themselves to fellowship. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts. In the original text, the Greek word for fellowship was koinonia, which has a wide definition worth looking at as we get our heads round what this holy habit means for Christian disciples. Koinonia means fellowship, of course, but it's deeper, richer than that, challenging us to recognise sharing in common, communion, coming together in love, faith and encouragement. And one phrase that appears many times in the New Testament is one another, which simply explains this sense in just two words. Eating together provides opportunities for fellowship. Sharing food and conversation can be a non-confrontational way of meeting people, friends that we know, acquaintances that we might like to know better, and strangers that we want to welcome into our company. Jesus was rooted in and lived in this tradition. Just as he shared food with all sorts and conditions of people as a sign of this inclusivity of God's kingdom, so too did the early church. Their gatherings to eat together were earthly representations of the heavenly banquet imagery that had been reinforced by Jesus throughout his teaching as well as through his actions. Following in his footsteps, the table fellowship of the early Christians was warm and accepting. All were welcome to partake of this basic and yet deeply sacred activity. So koinonia and eating together go hand in hand, and this reflection on these holy habits will encourage us to think of ways in which we can extend inclusive hospitality, welcome and fellowship both as individuals and as a church, a community of believers. So we have two Bible reflections, really, for this topic. Uh, The first is eating together. And there are many examples where Jesus embraced fellowship through eating together. And perhaps the most famous episode would be the feeding of the 5,000, where the the crowd who he'd been teaching needed food to eat, as well as spiritual food. This included one of his miracles, of course. Five loaves and two fishes for 5,000 people? Well, yes, it worked. It must have done, because there were 12 baskets left over. Well, that's not really an example that we're able to repeat. But instead, we might understand the circumstances around Jesus' parable about the prodigal son. There was much feasting in that story, and so we might explore it. So pause the recording for a moment and read from Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. And think about the human reflex actions of the various individuals. The early part of the story is about the impatient son who wants to leave the family home and make his fortune and life elsewhere. Predictably, it goes wrong, and he returns home. Having been starved on his adventure, the only thing left for him to eat was humble pie, until his father welcomes him back into family fellowship with a great feast. Extravagant and generous, The banquet is the backdrop for a great celebration and many were invited to eat together. But someone does not enjoy that fellowship. 
There's another son who'd stayed at home and worked while his brother had been off enjoying himself, and he was resentful and said so. Father calmed things down, and both sons did come to the feast. At that point, neither of them was judged, and the opportunity to eat together was offered to them both, deserved or not. Eating together is a response to our love for others, which should be equally non-judgmental. But are we? And then a passage for Koinonia. And there's a similar message coming from a real-life encounter for Jesus with Zacchaeus, who was a rich tax collector, although his moral life was not so rich. So just pause the recording again and read the story at Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. At first reading, this story doesn't obviously look at fellowship, but there are aspects of koinonia that can be found both positive and negative as we think about the position of Zacchaeus. By his own actions, he was not a welcome member of the community and was not enjoying fellowship. He was rich in a worldly way, but he was lonely and realised that as a tax man, he was not going to win friends. But he had heard that Jesus was a friend of tax gatherers and sinners and so contrived to meet him. Despised as he was, Zacchaeus was determined to reach out for God's love. And when Jesus went to his house, Zacchaeus took steps to show the wider community that he was a changed man, and in making restitution of what he had fraudulently obtained, he began to earn a place in fellowship. So having read both those gospel extracts, there are some topics to address to underline the connection between eating together and fellowship, and we can perhaps best explore that by comparing the prodigal son and Zacchaeus. For each, by their own actions, find themselves outcasts. The prodigal son lived the high life, and Zacchaeus tried to get above everyone else, literally, to see Jesus. The prodigal has to eat humble pie in returning. Zacchaeus pays back what he took, and more. And both are reinstated in family and community, true fellowship. The Bible includes stories where Jesus meets characters whom no one else wants to befriend, where Jesus brings them into fellowship with God and the people around them. It's easy to have fellowship with those we like, but Jesus encourages us also to have fellowship that we don't like so much. So in going forward, let's think of some patterns that we can explore. The joy of eating together, the value of table fellowship for deepening relationships, the missional influence of shared meals, and the opportunities for sharing faith, biblical teaching, prayer and worship around a meal table have all been rediscovered by both new and ancient forms of church. Holy Habits provides another opportunity to explore and live this godly practice. So far, so good. So much for the theory. But how can we put all this into action, especially at the moment? For in our current situation, with Covid restrictions of varying severity, we find it difficult, if not impossible, to practically share personal f fellowship and specific legal embargoes do not allow anything like table fellowship outside of our bubbles. So for now, as individuals, our opportunities are limited. But that does give us the chance to consider some ideas as church that we might put into practice when restrictions are lifted. For instance, maybe cafe church or cafe worship could be explored, to extend worship experience to others who are not comfortable with a traditional or formal style of worship. This might incorporate breakfast church when, over a simple continental breakfast, 
The day's readings can be examined and discussed. Eating and meeting al fresco always seems to encourage a more informal fellowship, and so breakfast could be taken in the church grounds when weather conditions permit. This, she this theme could be extended by considering church barbecues, which can certainly improve koinonia within our community, an inclusive way of engaging with our neighbours in West End who might not otherwise feel attracted to our activities. And as individuals too, when restrictions permit, we might consider those we know who live alone and who would relish the prospect of eating in company, not to mention the opportunity to cook for more than one in a more imaginative way. Each of us, whether in bubbles or not, should review how we can make our meals part of our daily worship by including some prayer time as we eat, remembering those who are unable to enjoy what we can, those who are starving or having to balance heating costs against the cost of food, one form of poverty against another. And there can be a vicarious sort of fellowship in contributing to food banks, in the knowledge that we can reach out to others in need, even if they and we will not physically meet. So these are just a few examples to start a process of drilling down into what might be possible as each outreach in our locality. In the circumstances of the moment, it would probably be worth accepting that this particular holy habit should be revisited when we're better placed to be proactive again. But above all, even in the current restrictions, don't forget that fellowship we can be part of as members of the Church, the Body of Christ. For just as COVID has been worldwide, so is the Christian church and we all sh share the same faith, the faith that boosts our understanding of the God who will not abandon us, the God who has faith in us, the God who gave his son for our redemption. So as preparation for another review and a brainstorm, here are some further points to ponder. It's easy to eat with friends and family. But what about those we don't know? How can we share food and fellowship with those who use our premises and the wider community? How often do we eat with our neighbours or those in our street? How can we be inclusive of those who are unable to eat freely for health reasons? How can we offer true koinonia in an inclusive way welcoming the stranger and inviting them into our fellowship. Well, to help us in this task, here are some prayers for those who are out of fellowship, even within our own community. Gracious God, we pray for those who find themselves alone, who long for companionship, those forbidden to meet with brothers and sisters in Christ or denied the opportunity to do so, those who have walked away from Christian communities that have loved and then still pray for them, those who have been hurt or abused in the name of fellowship, and those who no longer feel welcome or loved in a fellowship they once held dear. Gracious God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit who dwell in community, restore, renew and heal those we remember today. May God the Father keep us in communion with him. May God the Son lead us in his footsteps. And may God the Holy Spirit encourage us to be, embrace all, connecting with those we know and those we don't, in true communion, love, peace and thankfulness. Amen. So, get the habit and share it with others.